المتقين المعصومين المنتخبين المنتجبين المظلومين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا معينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم علي مع الحق والحق مع علي سلوات بر محمد وآل محمد فرسط فرل وی آر گریٹ فرل تو اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی who gave us this great opportunity الحمدللہ وی آر تکیدہ ونس اگین every single breath which we take it's a blessing of Allah سبحانہ وتعالی because there are so many things within our materialistic body which we cannot control at all and I always give these examples that the system of breathing I do not control my breathing system how the lungs are working how the nose is working how my nose only pick up oxygen and transfer it into the lungs and give me life or the blinks of my eye or my ears which are not in my control what to hear if there is any kind of sound I can't stop my ears to hear that so if I start counting is it needs such a time just to the just count those things which I already know so we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us this opportunity because this world is a shortcut towards ma'rifatullah what does that mean when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahzab that I did ask all the creation, do you want to become perfect by creation, by birth? Or do you want me to give you all the tools to become perfect? So every single creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to Surah Al-Ahzab, the second last verse, Everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, everything becomes so scared. And they said that it's a very difficult journey because to leave you inna lillah and to come back towards you wa inna ilahi rajiun. That was the journey to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that I will put you on ground zero and through the perfection you reach me back because your beginning is from me and your end will be at me and because I am endless so your journey will be endless so sometimes we think that the day we die the difficulties calamities or miseries will over no it will not over unfortunately it will turn into different forms and different shapes all the difficulties I give you one example for example when a human being is hidden within the dust because we come out from the dust as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the creation of Adam alayhi salam we had different difficulties then we transferred into the back of our father so we were potentially human being in the back of our father but we had difficulties which we were not able to control but someone was controlling those difficulties for us that is our lord then we move into the next realm which is the womb of a mother and within the womb of a mother we had different difficulties now here if you see gradually a human being is <coughs> basically evolving from potentiality 
to actuality. And when it comes to the womb of mother, this is the first stage when in the human being, al-insan, comes into some sort of separate shape, separate form, and gradually is detaching from the previous realms. So the realm in the earth, the realm in the back of the father, I've already given the details several times, and the realm of mother, mother's womb. But here now, a human being, ha being had the ability to do at least three jobs. One thing is that this body of the human being needs food. So that is coming through the blood of the mother. And in the womb of a mother, a child hears as well. So whatever happening outside, that child is listening within the womb of the mother. So that's why it's been said that when our daughters, our sisters, when they are, or our wives, when they are hamila, pregnant, they should be very, very careful. Because the program they're watching on the television, the way they're talking to other people, the way they're reacting to other people, that definitely affects the child. Because the child has the ability to hear. So this child is getting fed through the blood of mother. And at the same time, the child has the ability not only to hear, but this hearing could be printed on the heart of a child. That is a very scary thing. If a child comes to the world and then learn, I think life was so easy. But when the child is within the womb of a mother, the child is learning. If you please allow me to go a step back. When the child is in the back of, of a father, in a shape of a drop of a water. Even that is the time when the child is learning. So if a, a person who becomes father later on, now this person who become a father later on, when this person was not even married, if this person misbehave, this misbehavior is printed on the blood of that young man and through the blood that it transferred into the next stage, whatever that person was doing, behaving, that is printed there as well. So life is not that simple. The test is huge. It's huge test. But if we come to the very first stage, when a child has a separate kind of separate entity within the womb of a mother, even though this entity is still relying on mother, because this child is not able to eat by him or herself. It's coming through the cord of the mother. And the second thing is, the child hasn't got any control what to hear. So whatever the mother is hearing, behaving, that is the media. This, through this media, the child is learning. The third thing is, within the womb of a mother for that child, that the child is not able to walk with the legs but the child is able to float the water which is within the womb of the mother so this is the transportation of the child so child has three abilities now when a child come to this world now this child the actual cause of the existence if we go two steps back first is the mother and previously the father <coughs> we just stop up to here but now this child is <coughs> able to survive on his own or on her own without mother even though mother is the cause of the existence but the child has the ability to survive if we go few steps back, mother is the previous cause, behind that father is the cause, behind that 
just is the cause and behind that there is another cause which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so gradually this person is moving and getting far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the materialistic world which is called inna lillah so we are all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so in the shape in potentiality or al johar substance a human being detached from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into the dust but this person for survival needs God and then gradually next stage in the food next stage into the back of the father next stage is the womb of a mother now this person is in this world after a few years a child is able not to rely on milk first with the soft food and then with the hard food even a time comes when the person is able to chew the bones as well the child was not able to even chew a little piece of bread but now this child is able to even chew the bone so in gradual stages a human being forgets most of the thing not if not all of the things that the actual base of the existence of that child is the Lord and then into the dust then into the back of father then into the womb of mother then into this world and gradually the time comes when, when this person is stands on his feet and starts saying Allah, I'm the Lord he thinks that I control everything of mine and a time comes when this person is controlling his own thing freely then this person controls few of the things in the outer environment so for example this person makes a house goes to job or set up a business and gradually this person thinks that I am independent and then through these gradual process this person reaches the stage of Pharaoh Fir'aun Shaddad or Namrud that is a time when this person claims I am able to control my own needs but at the same time I am the provider of the other people when the provider of the other people or every single creation is only one Ar -Razzaq. the one who is Al Khalik now this person keep forgetting so still Pharaoh it wasn't his control to it was in his control to control his breathing system it was not in his control to stop his eyes not to blink or to put his heart on hold this is the negative side of a human being if that is the case then this dunya is the most worst place for that human being because as much a human being lives in this world a human being is getting away from the centric point which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but on the other hand if a person is attached with the Quran and at the same time if the person is under the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the tradition of the holy prophet and masumin then the person is getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a time is gonna come if a person goes negatively in the world you see this person is so powerful and controlling so many things so many people so many cities so many countries like we see the hooligan of the world America is controlling it they think that we are controlling the world but they are away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is only a deception for them they think that they control the world but they are not controlling the world but on the other hand if a human being to the positive track is getting near and near and near near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when he this person goes to the ocean of power to the ocean of knowledge to the ocean of life why give why did I give these examples because al ilm then he is al alim al hayat the life then he is al hay and when it comes to Al-Qudra, the power, then he is Qadir. 
So when the person moves into the positive way, a time comes when the person become the drop of that ocean. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, with your ability which I gave you in this short world, a short span of life, 40, 30, 50, 60, 80, 90 years, and you reach this point, now I will give you the ability, ability to become God yourself. Allah is saying this. If the person is going negatively and control few of the things in the world. So the person thinks that I am the God. And God said, no, you are nothing. If I break the chain of your breathing system, you will collapse on the ground at once. But on the other hand, if you go positively, if you listen to my commands and follow the way of my prophet, I will give you the ability to make the dead alive. Don't we see in the Quran, Hazrat Isa al Islam, he brought the dead into life? Don't we see in the Quran, Hazrat Ibrahim al Islam, when he killed four of the birds and he cut them into pieces, turned into mincemeat, mixed them, so nobody knew where is the little piece of such and such bird, where? And then he put onto four different mountains and then he hold the beaks, hold their heads into, the, into his hands. And he called and every single little tiny bit of the flesh was flying. This is in the Quran. That is the ability Ibrahim got within him. It was not the angels they were doing for Ibrahim. It was Ibrahim which was making them alive. And if a person walks on the path where Ibrahim walked, then the person had the same ability. <laughs> now, I don't know why it come to my mind, but Agajan, now we are on a place, Amir al Mu'minin as a role model, that Amir al Mu'minin, few hours before, before his death, before his shahada, he is giving these advices to his all children, wives, and daughters, all sons, daughters, <coughs> and wives. He was holding the hand of Imam Hassan and Mushtaba al Islam. We have read the first advice of Amir al Mumneen. I just read this again and then we go for number two. He says, O oh my sons and my daughters, O oh my family, I command you and all my children and family, as well as those who read my letter. So that means this is for the whole humanity, not only for Imam Hassan Mustaba and his brothers and sisters. Then he says, To fear Allah Almighty, ittaqullah, and then to regulate your affairs, wa nazme amrikun, discipline your life. Without discipline, there is no success in this life. If you want to do any work, you want to build a house, you want to build a car, you want to study, you want to make food. Now we say, oh, when I make food, I just make food like this. No. If you go into the kitchen, you will see that on the chopping table, all the ingredients within certain quantities are ready one by one. And there is a certain time. Because we do these things a lot, so we do not see the discipline inside. But just look at yourself, you stand before the mirror. Just look at yourself. How disciplined you've been made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> look at your ears on the side. Because from the front you can see, but ears on the side is protecting you from these two sides at the same time at the, at the back as well. Look at your eyes. This one of the insect, if I can recall the name, Aguana. Girgit jis kwaam kyalte. Aguana. If you see that Aguana's eyes are 360 degree dimensional. It moves within the, uh, within the eyes. And Aguana is able to see at the back as well. <laughs> at the same time as looking at the front. You look into the animals. Animals, they can't buy a blanket to get rid of the cold weather. But their skin is according to the weather. When we see such a discipline, you find me a single thing and say this thing has absolutely no discipline. You will not be able to find it. If you try to find a thing which is in the world and 
it has absolutely no use you will not be able to find it now the lord who created the world on such a discipline would that lord allow me to be an indisciplined person and ruin everything for you himself and for the people no amirul mu'minin alayhi salam says to fear allah almighty to regulate your affairs and maintain your relation with others and now the next thing agajan please listen to this next word N next word amir mu'minin said that maintain your relation with other people yesterday we did talk about divorce that people think that getting divorce is the solution for everything especially in the western society it's a norm to get divorce 85 percent ratio of divorce here now alhamdulillah or i would say nauzubillah not alhamdulillah nauzubillah our muslim community they are trying very hard to catch up this 85 percent i remember i'm 57 now up to the age of 37 or 40 or even 50 just seven years back we had only three or four divorces in our huge bradri only three divorces in 50 years but now it's normal people think okay i have all these sorts of problems because of my wife or wife think that all sorts of problems are because of my husband no because your life is not disciplined if you put everything there if you are lower middle class obviously you will have financial problem if you have financial problem and unfortunately your husband doesn't earn enough money then why going for luxury life prioritize your things the thing you need the most you can't survive it that is number one then the second priority then the third priority. what are these things these things are discipline amir only saying say exactly the same thing yes we live in the system which is based on capitalism in capitalism even though if you not go into luxury life but number one taxes number two electricity utility bills then council tax these things will haunted you and to get you but if that is the problem what is the solution to slap on wife's face or what is the solution if a wife is not able to hit back then to give a big mouth no this is not the solution get together and the abilities you've been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use them discipline yourself and prioritize your things a person came to the sixth imam he said Mawla, who is the most richest person listen to the saying of Imam Sadiq he said who is the most richest, richest person Imam said what do you think he said Mawla who's got a lot of money a lot of wealth Imam said no the richest, richest person is whatever resources that person has he knows how to use those resources otherwise you see these Arab prince they don't even know how much money they have got but when you go and look into their heart the most darkest heart of these people they are the actual pure poor people on their boundary line the children the women and mazlumin they are yelling for just one glass of water they are not able to give this water what kind of poverty is that when you go to their tablecloth in Medina, in Makkah, you will see this tablecloth full of food in miles. You probably see on the media. But just a few hundred yard miles away, it's been bombardment for 174, 75 days. But their poverty is not allowing them to go and at least speak. That is poor poverty. But on the other hand, we see there is a country under the section for 45 years, 43, 45 years. They are struggling to keep up their own economy. But at the same time, they're trying and they're doing their best. Another poverty you want to see? Look in our country, Pakistan. How many people are there? They have got such a koti and bangalore. <laughs> but they don't have the ability to give food to one person for one time. So end of the day, it's the discipline which 
makes human being human being and Amir al-Mu'mineen says and then the next statement when Amir al-Mu'mineen said that you must manage your affairs your relation with other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he says something please listen to this statement <clears throat> Amir al-Mu'mineen says <clears throat> oh my son Hassan I heard from your grandfather the holy prophet peace be upon him and his household he says maintaining your relation with other is better than nawafila prayer and nawafila fasting if you have a choice to pray or if you have nawafila prayer i'm not talking about the wajib or nafila fasting and you have a choice to help someone or to delay the prayer or even leave the nawafila prayer you must go there once i give you example for both of them inshallah once imam sadiq al islam he was doing tawaf he was doing tawaf of kaaba and as far as i remember one of his companion by the name of aban ibn taghlab one of a great companion of imam al islam he was doing tawaf with Imam Sadiq al Islam, circumambulating the Kaaba. He was doing tawaf with Imam al Islam. And a person came from outside, standing outside slightly away, and he was calling Aban ibn Taghlab. Imam Sadiq al Islam saw it. No, he is doing tawaf with the Imam. It's a it's he is going round and round baitullah and he is with imam under the supervision under the imamat of imam al islam is such an honor billions of people they never had this honor but this person aban ibn taghlab he is under the supervision under the command under the imam of imam al islam so when imam al islam saw this person is making gesture to call him outside aban ibn taghlab he said that do you know the person imam al-islam said to him do you know the person and aban said <coughs> yes the son of messenger of rasul allah messenger of allah that i know him imam said go outside and listen to him and fulfill his requirement aban said ya maulai ya sayyidi oh my master he is not one of your follower he's not from the shias imam said that who is this person and aban said he is from the other side of the islam imam said if the person was even a non-muslim i would command you go and fulfill his requirement now look at the statement of amir al maintain your relation with the public because i heard from your grandfather that Maintaining the relation with public is better than nawafila prayer and nawafila fasting. Now another example. Please listen to this example. Alhamdulillah, you will understand this example very nicely because you all are in the state of fasting. Apart from month of Ramadan, in the month of Ramadan, if you are keeping a fast either you are making up for the previous ramadan or you have a nafli roza or mustahab roza or fasting and if a moment comes and offer you or invite you to eat during the daytime imam sadiq says even though it's few minutes left before maghrib go and eat with that person why is that again to having a good relation with the human being can you see the point here how important is to stay together get together we all are human beings we all have different intellect the way we have no two people in the world you will not find two people in the world they have the same fingerprint you will not be able to find two people even the identical twins having the same brain now you are having a different view if you look at my back you see on the top of the member it says imam hasani mustaba but if i don't look back or don't 
stand next to you would i would i be able to see that no and without seeing without proving that if i start 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 denying you is that rationally right no people are different even when in one class when we all read surah al fatiha for example the people they have different way different accents different way to read even surah al fatiha you say your prayer behind so many ulamas and when you hear their surah al fatiha it sounds different even though it's the same surah al fatiha even though it's been commanded that you must know the rules of tajweed but end of the day i don't have the same voice like anybody else then some of the people they have the command to say because fata kasra and dhamma three are the vowels in arabic some of the people they are strong to say fata easily some of the people they are strong to say dhamma easily dhamma is the most difficult to pronounce u u sound most of the time people say qalub qalub is a wrong word qulub is the right word especially the people like me we came from punjab i used to make the same mistake so qalub is not a word qulub is the word so people are different we need to bear each other we need to explain each other and becoming stubborn even though if you are on the right path you know though you know what you know that is the truth that is the utmost truth but still you can't force this truth onto other people's heart just present nicely before them like a good seller a person a good shopkeeper place everything nice and fresh before the people and let the people choose once they have chosen that will go into their heart and if you try to break the truth and try to feed them forcefully they will vomit there and then again that the thing happens normally in our communities that's why alhamdulillah i'm a great admirer of luton community not because i am part of this community but by god i am admirer of this community why it's a huge community you will not find 6 700 600 plus houses in just one town within 7 mile radius and they have got only one center i've been to europe there are 50 houses within 200 kilometers and they've got three centers is the way of running is the way of running they don't like each other they are doing too many programs 10 people sitting in one center 10 people sitting in second center 10 people sitting within couple of miles distance three miles is no amirul mu'minin said don't do this your strength is in your unity now i've got 2 minutes left and inshallah i go for the next one tomorrow because we don't have this unity how many muslims are in the world 2 billion 2 billion i say this again 2 billion and how many jews are in the world 8 million 8 million 2 billion 8 million can you see the ratio but they are doing what they are doing because we don't have the unity our ulamas if you take the example of pakistan especially because <laughs> end of the day we belong to pakistan and we have to bring that <coughs> we have all the ulamas from the sunni then and several sect from the sunnis from the shias from the different groups of shias they all cursing each other when they go to the television they just try to prove okay she are the best deobandis are the best wahabi are the wahabis are the best where is islam or oh, if you want to know about sunni read this book from aga who is aga ahmed raza barelvi if you want to read about shia read dr tajani's book you will know who the shias are because he was ex sunni no aga jan you can't reach the unity like this the unity is with only two things inni tarikun fi kum thaqalain kitab allah wa itrati ala baiti if you want to call someone there is only two things book of allah subhanahu wa taala in one hand and 
The other hand is Ahlul Bayt. Wa akhirul dawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin.